Hi folks, I have tried to make this video about four times so far and I had to start again. Usually they say the third time's a charm, but <laughs> not so far. When I read to you this letter that I received from a YouTube user, uh, you'll understand why it has been so difficult for me to reply. I'm from Saudi Arabia, 19 years old. I'm no longer a Muslim, brackets, agnostic. My doubt story started when I was 13, when I started asking questions about God and the Quran, the holy book of Islam. I noticed the tension of asking these questions publicly, so I kept them in the private sphere. When I was 17, I became agnostic, but I have, I have not told anyone in my life, including my family and my closest friend. Because if I do, they will exile me and the government will execute me for attempting apostasy. Brackets. Death penalty. Do you suggest me to emigrate to another country and leave everything that I had in my life and start a new life? Okay, that's quite a, quite a heavy issue that this person is wanting some advice with. And I can't possibly, let me say this right at the outset, I can't possibly tell you what to do. This is your responsibility and you're going to have to make your mind up about this. And there really is no right or wrong about it. What I would really advise you to do is just to try and get clarity on what the real consequences of both options will be. The consequences of staying where you are of continuing to enjoy the friendship and the love of your family, but having to suppress your individuality. Can you live with that? Then what are the consequences of starting a new life abroad, where presumably you'll get to express yourself and your family will know about your exit from Islam. They will disapprove of you, they will disown you and all the rest of it and you will have lost your family. Can you live with that? So, I don't know you, so I don't know what you can and can't live with or what you really want out of this life. But I know that uh, we're all thrown into a set of cir circumstances when we're born. We're all thrown into a set of circumstances that are not of our own making. And you just have to sink or swim with it. You have to survive. You have to do whatever it takes to survive. So I suppose I should say the third option is to declare that you are now an ex-Muslim and to suffer apostasy and to suffer the death penalty. Let's put that right off the table, please. I do not advocate any kind of martyrdom. It goes against everything that I think is important about life. And primarily what is important is survival. Life is useless if you're not living it. So, it's either going to be you stay where you are and you keep your mouth shut or you go abroad and you be who you are publicly. So let's, uh, let's, let's consider the ramifications of staying where you are. You know, if you're anything like me, you have this very strong desire to be transparent with people. And to a large extent, I am transparent with people. And I think a lot of people here on YouTube really appreciate how much of myself and my personal life that I actually do inject into these videos. And I'm able to do it because I don't live with any kind of fear of other people's disapproval. And I don't actually need people's approval to feel good about myself. Uh, not everyone's like that, but um, I am. So I'm not afraid to reveal something about my personal life and suffer potentially the laughter and the mockery of some people because that just reveals to me that they're worthless people. Um, so I enjoy that side of my life. I enjoy being able to express myself. I would hate to have that taken away from myself. But at the same time, you know what? I'm not completely transparent with you people. 
I don't think anybody is really. This is why TV shows like Dexter are popular. Because we relate to Dexter, the psychopath who works for Miami Metro PD. <laughs> I don't know if you get that TV show over there in Saudi Arabia. I don't know much about your country, but um, you know, Dexter's this guy who knows he doesn't fit in. He's not like everybody else and he has to hide. So he goes with it and he learns to thrive by living a kind of a double life where he has these terrible urges to kill people. So he, uh, he, he kind of has a code of honor where he'll only execute people who are bad who've done something terrible and who deserve to die because of who they are. And that's how he gets, you know, control of himself. But at the same time, this is not a side of his life that he can reveal to anybody else. So he has a double life. And the TV show weaves through all sorts of avenues where he maybe, he finds true love and he finds someone who actually understands and accepts him for who he is you know we all i think the success of dexter at least in terms of why i like the show is because i can relate to having a certain level of i don't want to call it jekyll and hydeness exactly but we all have parts of ourselves that we're afraid to reveal to people now don't worry everybody i haven't killed anybody I'm not planning on killing anybody, okay? But I have not been completely honest with all of you about who I am, and I never will be. And I'm okay with that, because I am not accountable to you people. I'm only accountable to myself. And I'm not interested in any false moral aspirations such as what you get through Christianity. But I know that I'm able to lead a productive life and I can get through this life without doing any real harm to anybody unless that person wants to harm me. So that's all you need to know. <laughs> What's in the closet, Daryl? So, I know I'm being a little bit, you know, I'm being a little bit um, flippant here, but I mean this kind of seriously, you know. Transparency isn't all it's cracked up to be. I don't feel that I need to turn the entire world into my personal confessional, because they're not my judges. And in, in fact, you know, <laughs> my harshest critic sometimes is myself. So, I want you to, to realize that going to another country and being, being able to express who you are may not really change anything for you. It just means you've lost your family. You've still got to live a life, just like you have a life in Saudi Arabia. But at the same time, I also want to say that maybe you have a very strong, powerful desire to communicate with people about who you really are. I know, me personally, I would hate to be in the situation that you're in. And I don't really know how I would cope with it. I would have to. But I would hate it. And I really appreciate being in the sort of country that allows me to be able to speak. Because doing this thing on YouTube where I get people writing to me telling me how much uh, I've helped them. That really means a lot to me. And I'm not looking my ego stroked. 
I just want to lead the sort of life that has some some sort of impact for good uh, in the world around me in some small measure. And if I couldn't do that, that would kill me. So there's no right or wrong answer here. I'm just giving you stuff to think about. So think about transparency. Think about how important that really is to you. Is it important? Is it not? Figure it out. Get clarity on this. The second thing I want to talk about is the matter of honesty. And it makes me wonder, do you feel guilty about having to lie to your parents and to the people around you? You shouldn't. Now, we all know the saying, honesty is the best policy. That's just not true. It's true most of the time. But there are situations that life can throw at you where it is not only appropriate to lie, it's imperative that you lie. And you're, in fact, you're in one of those situations yourself. If you tell the truth, you're dead. So, don't bear any guilt about that whatsoever. Because your personal survival is your number one priority. The guilt that we tend to feel about these things, and it's the same over here with Christianity, it's all to do with the religious baggage that was programmed into us from our birth. It's the residue of our culture. This impossible ethical ideal of purity, of absolute truthfulness. It's not found anywhere in the natural world, and you're a part of the natural world. I could cite all sorts of examples, because I'm a, I'm a fan of watching nature documentaries. And when I watch them, I tend to pay attention to the things that I can draw parallels with in human experience because we're primates, we're mammals, we're part of this whole great diversity of, of life on the planet. And you know what? Among the animal kingdom, deception takes place all over the place. Do you realize that any animal that uses camouflage for defense is attempting to deceive the animal that wants to attack it. It's telling fibs. It's saying, hey, I'm not really here. Don't notice me. That's a lie, isn't it? It's the same thing as a lie. There's some really marvelous examples of deception. Um, this is a little bit off topic, but I want to share it because it was, it was fantastic. I saw it in a, in, a, in a David Attenborough documentary, and I can't remember which one it was, and I can't remember what this creature was called. It was some sort of squid or octopus. We'll just call it an octopus because I can't remember. But anyway, on the seabed, we had this large male octopus, and it was guarding a female who was inside a nearby cave. So he, was basically, he had basically laid claim to this female and no other male was going to get near it. So along comes this much smaller male octopus who's no match for the large one in a fight. So he uses a completely different strategy. The smaller male brings its tentacles together in such a way at the front that he makes himself appear like a female. And he changes his color, he's able to do that. He changes his color to something that resembles a female. And he starts moving towards this larger male. So he, walk, he goes right past, appearing to be a female, he goes right past the larger male and on into the cave where the female lies. And the larger male just lets him right on past, thinking, come right on in, darling. Two's better than one. <laughs> Menage a toi. So, um, this small male goes into the chamber where the female is, and she's a bit of a, a loose woman. So, she's quite happy to have this other male come along and impregnate her. So, uh, he gets his sperm in, and off he goes. He slinks away again, successfully having passed on his genes. 
through deception. That's marvelous, you know. So, see this whole thing about never telling lies? That's garbage. Of course, we all realize that in the general run of life, honesty really is the best policy. To give honesty to other people, to expect it from them in return, that creates the best kind of world. But unfortunately, life will sometimes throw you a situation where you have to lie, and so you should. So I'm just saying to you, get more comfortable with the predicament that you're in, where you have to be deceptive. You wish you weren't, but you have to be, and you shouldn't bear guilt about it. That may make this easier to deal with. So that was the second thing that I wanted to talk about. Um, ultimately, staying where you are with your family, not revealing who you are, that's a perfectly legitimate choice. Seeking another life in another country, that's also a perfectly legitimate choice. There is no right or wrong here. You just have to try and get clarity about what it is you want. We are all thrown into circumstances where we're not in control of everything that happens to us. And you know what? We have no inherent right to a life without conflict. If you look at the entire animal kingdom, it's full of conflict. If you look at the arena of microorganisms, it's full of conflict. You sometimes hear me saying this is a satanic universe. That's a very theatric and colorful way of saying that every fractal level of the universe, right from cellular life right up to the entire width of galaxies, every level of it is hostile. And the reason why that is so is to do with energy conversion. I've talked about this before. So I don't want you to feel that um, we, you know, we all want a peaceful life. But I don't want you to feel that there's anything particularly unnatural about being stuck in a situation where you have to face hostility. You know, there is more of the world today that is stuck facing hardship and hostility than there is in these comfortable little pockets of it in places like where I live. And, you know, there has here in Northern Ireland, we've had our fair share of trouble as well. You're probably familiar with the phrase, the troubles, as it was called. There's still a great deal of tribalism here in Northern Ireland between um, Protestant and Catholic communities. There's a lot of segregation. I'm right bang in the middle of a completely Protestant um, area. It's the same area that I was born in and I still live there. And I don't consider myself a Protestant or a Catholic, but this just happens to be where I live. There would be no Roman Catholics anywhere near where I live. And yet if I went to the other side of my town, um, there is a Roman Catholic area where there would be no Protestants living. <laughs> and I can drive through there in, in a car or my motorcycle, and that's fine. But it would be difficult to live there. Something might happen to you, just as it would be difficult for a Roman Catholic to live here. It's not as bad as it used to be. Um, decades ago, people were being put out of their houses and everything. Um, things are calmer, but you know, I was born into this conflict. A friend of mine who lived in this area became a Roman Catholic and he had to be a Roman Catholic while living in this area. And uh, his mother was uh, his mother had connections to the Orange Order and everything, and which is, you know, a Protestant organization. Um, so <laughs> that was kind of tough for him. He had to live a, a double life to some extent. 
But I know that's that's nothing compared to what you face. And I really do feel for you. So I've given you a few things to think about. It's not exactly what you'd call advice. Um, it's just the sort of thoughts that would occur to me if I were in a situation like yours. And that's a real tough situation. And I don't envy the predicament that you're in. But, you know, think about the positives too, that even though you don't see eye to eye with what your culture believes, you have a family that loves you, you have friends that love you, and even though that love could turn to something very nasty, were you to announce certain things, try to remember that these are very deeply brainwashed people. And the love is genuine, despite all the other stuff that is running around in their heads. You're just very lucky in that you've seen through it at such an early age. So clarify what it is you want with your life and accept the consequences of whatever choice you make. Know what those consequences will be and be prepared to accept them. Whatever you choose. And also, you know, there's no need to be in any real hurry about this. You've only been an agnostic for about two years. So you're still probably finding your feet with all of this. So don't be in too much of a hurry. But whatever you ultimately decide, I wish you all the best.